Right, well it's time to have a little chat in the Tackle Shack about one of the beach end rigs I've been using, possibly a sort of, it's like a variation, just sort of made it up because I've mentioned it in previous films, it's really bothered me about when you clip the bait down on the bait clip next to the lead and you cast it out, the pressure whizzing through the air there's the hook, is pushing everything back over the eye of the hook. Now I know you can put a little stop set to stop, say, worms sliding up, but very often you impact the water, which releases the link from the hook, uh, the hook link from the lead, that's fine, but then I get a bite, and most of the bait's around the eye, and I miss, I miss the fish, and it's just sort of stuck in my head, after years thinking, this must be happening all the time, Graham. So, all very well, cast in a long way, but, not much good when it detaches and disengages if I keep missing fish. I need some sharp hooks, I know that, keep sharpening the old ones, but I have got some sharp new hooks. But the other way is, if you cast out without clipping down, as you cast through the air, the snood, the link, folds back the other way and the hook is facing the opposite direction to being clipped down. Well, I just figured that air pressure and the impact of hitting the water is pushing the boat onto the bend of the hook, if anything, which is the end I want the fish to get hold of. Look, just a little theory time of mine. Seems to be working, getting the odd fish. It's not going wild, but I'm sort of fishing more confidently and I don't have to worry about the boat not disengaging. Yes, it might cut down a little bit of distance for me at my age. I'm not really bothered. I want to get a bait 70, 80, 90 yards out. Happy days. Anyway, I'll show you the basics of the rig. So as they say in those cooking programs, here is one I prepared earlier. Let's get the old binoculars on. I'll show you close up. Anyway, basically, lead clip here. You clip your lead on here, I just do one span of this stuff, which is called, no, I'm not selling it, I've had it years, I mean years, 10 years, maybe 15 years, called Sure Shock 50 pound, well, shock leader. It's supposed to be high performance shock leader, 50 pounds, 22.7 kg, 0.65 mil. It's supposed to be 150 meters on there, which is like why it's lasted me all these years. But I find it very, very supple. It's one of the Garda brands. I don't know if they still make it. I have no idea. This is a really old one, a Richard Garda gave me years ago. So, lead goes on here. I do a span and then I feed on, in this order, a crimp, a small bead, a swivel, barrel swivel, another bead, and the crimp, okay? So, what I call the rig body is at least I'm going to call it six feet long. You don't, you don't have to measure these things, but it's, it's a span. Look, I'm trying to show you, trying to show you what I'm doing at the present time. There, maybe it's five feet six. So these are not on the pulley pedal rigs, but I've got at least there the drop from here to the hook there. 20 inches, perhaps not quite two feet. Then a big space between my two fingers here to the next um, snood that's tied. Same thing, crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. There's my M1 for tying on the line. And here is the other length of 50. I'm just using this Sure Shock 50 all the time. Use what you want. But I found when I use, say, 15 pound traces, sometimes 20, I do get tangles with it. You know, it tangles up and it might not fish so well. The heavier line tends to sit, sit better, whichever, whichever 50 I use, I use some other 50 as well, whatever comes out of the box, I use that 50. It, it does seem to not tangle, but the thing that doesn't tangle right is this piece here. Look, let me just show you in close up. So the setup is just like this, but what it does, it doesn't seem <coughs> to tangle, it's spinning round. So I'll show you what we do here. What it, it might pay you to do is put a little slope, oh come on, there, just so that goes through this bead better. These are mini double sleeves, I guess you could use a single sleeve, they may even sell them in the tackle shops for this job. 
that's a 1.3 so way big for 50 pound line but it, it will work so you go swivel then you go bead now I like these little yellow beads I do like these they're just enough the bead has to be the right size so the they don't go through the swivel the swivel goes on again I'll show you all in close up on goes another bead on goes the other crimp. It's a, do this on a piece of scrap line. Slide it all down. There. Now I'm going to move towards the camera. Can you see that like that? I'm sure you can. So obviously it's loose but it spins around. So the first thing I do is to crimp one of these tight but I'm using my old ones. These are just an old pair of uh, crimping tools and different grades on there. 2, 2, 1, 9, 1, 6, 1.3 these are 1.3s, but they're cup to cup, if that makes sense. They're cup to cup. So they're sort of, let me show you. So it's cup to cup. The two ends come together like that. And then they're compressed. That's what I would use standard that doesn't damage mono. If you're using wire, you can use cup to point, which is a cup here, and the other piece of the tool compressing it is a point that pushes in. Now that's fine for wire. In fact, I do use those for wire. And they pinch into the wire but you don't want that cup to point pushing into the mono I find it might weaken it especially on the rig body which you know you're casting with this is a rig body of just straight 50 because I'm just lobbing out here I'm just lobbing out I'm not doing big pendulum power cast in which case I'd use 80 I've got the 80 so just for lobbing out general fishing I find the desired distance that I want to fix this on here and I make sure I go in cup to cut there, I'm going to bring it as close as I can, you might be able to see on the end there before it all goes blurred <coughs> crush it tight, okay that's that's on there, it's not moving now then the bead goes up against that then the swivel then the bead come on, and then the other crimp I also don't like to push that down really tight because that might restrict the swivel, I want a little bit of play so I'm going to turn it around and just as loose as it is there, very difficult to get this while I'm sitting so far away from the camera. Cup to point, just a little bit of play. Can you see that movement left there? About there. Oh, I squeeze that tight there. Now, what you'll see there, it, it will be fishing this way. I used to use blood loops like this off here, but this way is much better because that swivel goes round and round and round and doesn't seem to tangle quite so much. That's what I'm finding. And these crimps hold well, and even if they did slide, they can't come off. They're only going to go down as far as the lead when you're pulling in this way. So that is the way I've been using mine at the moment. And then you just tie off, there's a vertical bead there. You can see that? So it spins, look. It just spins round and round and round doesn't tangle around the main rig body line and then say from there to the lead I've got my two feet I use a length of whatever shock line you want uh, shock leader whatever link you want for your snood again I'll just use straight 50 on this but I'll show you on this one when the weight is there it sort of holds it away from the main body a little bit you know it's got plenty of movement there on the hook front I'm using and have been again not selling this is just ones I've been using size wise are those two got one left <laughs> all right a camera sand and a cox and roll now there's other ones you can get mustads all the different makes but this size this one's a camera sand b940 aberdeen chemically etched needle point hook it's a 3-0 which is quite good for a big worm or a squid worm combo wrap or indeed any other wrap you want to make with mackerel and stuff for slightly bigger fish thornback rays, smooth hounds, you know, um, bass, that type of thing. Um, this one, the Cox and Wall is called A, which it's got on it, I am no idea what it's slightly smaller, SCR26, it's a 2.0. It says a classic Aberdeen standard wire hook, strong round bend with micro barb, ideal for worm baits. And that's a black one. Now they're quite, I find, these hooks even so, if that was snaked in the bottom, they still God, you've got to pull quite hard to get them straightened out. Now some hooks will straighten out and snap, some hooks will spring apart 
and then retain their shape or you can bend them back in shape and use them again. Now, down Somerset where we go, I think it was Craig Butler, the shore guy down there, was telling me he likes using a fairly springy hook. I'd be worried I'm going to spring the fish off if I get the fish. But he's saying if it gets in a snag, at least it will open up between and you can get it back and then readjust it again. And down there it's snaggy. So for snaggy ground you might want a slightly bendy hook or springy hook, but be aware, don't just haul away if you get a big fish, you're going to have to play it properly. Now, you've got the rig here. Let's pull that back for you. So you've got the rig there. From here, the length of my trace, snood, whatever you call it there, dropper, that's sort of a good 20 inches, I would say. Then I go down to the other one, 20 inches. And what you want to do, I found, is go to get some of these Look, just an old CD case. That's all that is. In fact, it says Power Edge Service. It's just for taking CD. You give it a charity shop sometimes for nothing. But I don't think a lot of people have CDs now. But they're dead handy for putting your stuff in like this because you don't want them tangled up. Look, they come with these sort of U cutouts there, if you can see that. Because you, each flap, you get two. You can have a trace this side and a trace that side. And if it was a plastic sleeve across there, sometimes you can't get your fingers in. But I find these dead handy for storing them in. Because all you do is get hold of your tray, straighten it out. I take hold of, if you can see that there, hook and a swivel together, just loosely, don't pull in your hand. Just go round and round and round like this. You can overlap them. You can see how long this, this unit is, this whole rig is. Just tuck it loosely there. I don't go round and round many times because otherwise when you come to take it out, you're going to get tangled and you want to bait in the water, don't you? But then all I do, lift the flap up and tuck it nice and neatly in there. So these are ready to use. And do you know what it's cost me? Other than the rig bodies and all the beads and stuff like that, the pouch has cost me nothing, look guys. It's an old CD pouch. And I also find here, you can rinse these off with fresh water when you finish with them, dry them on a bit of paper towel, put them away. Sometimes if you have Ziploc ones, which I have got and have used, you Ziploc it with moisture in there, especially salt, that's the end of the hook, good night, Vienna, you've got to sharpen it all. The idea is to use something like this, and there's more where it gets in there, that's what I feel anyway. So there you go. I have to say I've been really pleased using those rigs. Although I know with the two big baits loose flying through the air, I'm going to cut my distance down. I'm not bothered because I fish with more confidence knowing those two hooks have got the bait forced by air resistance and impact with the water pushed towards the bend of the hook rather than clip down and pushed away. And there might just be a bend of the hook, say you've got worm or combo wrap. Yes, you bind it with elastic, but it can still slip up a bit with a big cast. But it's by the point, and the point is, well, I want the fish to eat the point. I don't want it eating it up by the eye, do I? And I get bang, 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 I'm starting to bring it in. Oh, he's come off. Well, he's come off because he's bitten the eye of the hook and not the point of the hook. It's theory time again, guys. Hope you enjoy it, and hopefully I can get out and catch some more fish on these rigs because I'm enjoying using them.